Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about the Higgs boson, which is probably the most important discovery in particle physics in the last several decades. The Higgs boson was discovered at CERN, the huge nuclear research facility near Geneva, Switzerland. It was discovered as part of the ATLAS experiment, which is a collaboration between many scientific institutions around the world. We're going to talk about why scientists are so excited about the Higgs boson. We'll discuss the current state of particle physics, physics from both the experimental and theoretical perspectives, and how all of this research may affect you. I have two guests. Su Dong is an experimental particle physicist and head of the ATLAS experiment group at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, also known as SLAC. SLAC is one of the participating institutions in the ATLAS experiment. Peter Graham is a theoretical particle physicist who's worked at SLAC and is now in the Stanford Physics Department, where he's already made some important contributions to particle theory. I'm going to be talking to my guests in just a few minutes, but first, I recently interviewed another physicist, Professor Val O'Shea from the University of Glasgow in Scotland, who's been working on the ATLAS experiment for the past 20 years. I interviewed him via Skype. Here's that interview. Shea, welcome to Future Talk. Thank you, Martin. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, the world of physics has had a lot of excitement recently because of the Higgs boson. What's the excitement all about? Well, the recent discovery announced at CERN is the discovery of the last of the particles in actual fact that make up the equation that fit the standard model of particle physics, if you like. So, given that this has taken 20 years of uh, uh, three and a half thousand people's lives on my experiment and a similar amount of time for the other experiment at CERN, uh, this is a considerable achievement. Now, when you say that it's filled in the standard model, what exactly is that standard model? The standard model, in a nutshell, is a series of mathematical equations that describe how particles, matter, interacts with itself and gives us what we have today, both uh, everything that you see around you and everything that's in the universe. So this is about fundamental properties of the universe, the most basic particles of matter that we can detect? Yes, uh, and this goes right back to, if you like, the, the Big Bang, the start of time, uh, for want of a better way of describing it. Now, the Higgs boson is a type of boson. What's a boson in general? What are the basic properties of a boson? The basic properties of a boson are that it mediates forces between the particles that make up matter. And so you have uh, the photon, which... Um, gives the electromagnetic forces, and the Higgs boson, its particular thing is that it gives mass to all of the other particles. When you say that it gives mass, what does that mean? That, does that mean other particles don't have mass unless a Higgs boson is nearby? They have mass in the Higgs field, so this is the thing that gives them mass. And uh, essentially, when, when, when you look at mass, uh, it's something that you, you can feel in your hand because of the weight of it. But how you describe that mathematically is quite different. And so this is where the Higgs comes in. Now, your field is designing equipment to do scientific experiments to look for these particles. Could you describe in a nutshell uh, what this equipment has to do in order to show a particle such as the Higgs boson? Okay. Um, in the experiment that we do, bunches of protons at very, very high energy um, circulate a, in a ring, which is 27 kilometers long, and bunches of protons are brought into collision with each other once every 25 nanoseconds, which is 40 million times a second. And some of those protons interact w with the protons from the other bunch, and they, they release uh, particles of very, very high energy that uh, propagate through the experiment. So, so the experiment, in actual fact, tracks all of these individual particles 
and measures their energy, and then you try and reconstruct what happens when the original protons or parts of the protons interacted with each other. So you're saying that protons are shot at each other at very high speeds, and then they break apart, and then how do you follow the results? This must happen extremely fast. Yes. Um, the, all of the particles essentially are traveling at the speed of light. So wh when the particles break apart uh, at very, very high energy, the, at the center of the experiment there's a, a very large magnetic field because the whole experiment is, a, is in a big toroidal magnet. And this bends particles of charge as they travel through the matter. And as, as each of the, the uh, fragments of the collision travel through the detector, the, there are um, detector elements that track the passage of the particles with great precision. And here we're talking uh, tens of microns. A micron is a millionth of a meter over distances of, of tens of meters. So it's very, very high precision tracking, very high precision measurement of the way the particles bend in the magnetic field because that tells you about the charge of the particle and its energy. And finally, all of the particles are stopped in a calorimeter, which is a, a device for measuring the energy of each of these fragments. Now, once you have a Higgs boson or any type of boson, does that particle last or does it just instantly vanish and disappear? Oh, these particles have lifetimes of a millionth, millionth, millionth of a second. So they have a very, very fleeting existence. And in actual fact, when we do the experiment that that looks for these, we can't actually see the particle itself. What we see are the products that decay from it. I think one of the big things about this is while the Higgs boson itself will take some time to have an impact on society, a lot of the technologies that were developed to enable the experiments to take place will have a much, much more immediate effect on society. If, if you look, for example, at the World Wide Web, which was invented at CERN as a means of being able, getting scientists to be able, in distant communities to be able to communicate more effectively with each other, this has had a, a tremendous effect on society over the last 15 years since it became uh, commonplace. There are also um, aspects of the technology that we're working on that, that have that will have big impacts on medicine and diagnostic medicine and on issues like national security. We're back in the studio and that was my interview with Val O'Shea from the University of Glasgow in Scotland. Now I'm here with my two guests, Sue Dong, experimental particle physicist from SLAC, also Peter Graham, theoretical particle physicist from Stanford Physics Department. Great to have both of you on the show. Looking forward to an interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you for Great. inviting us, and uh, uh, very glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. Sudong, let me start with you. I asked Val O'Shea the same question, but I'd like to get your view. Why is the Higgs boson causing so much excitement in the world of physics? Why is this such a big deal? 